Easy question. Easy question. Another hard question? You're kidding. Probably another DP question. Okay. Up to a thousand words. Each string has a thousand as well. It's definitely DP, but what would the sub problem be? I guess it would be on the target word. So DP of I could be, I guess, a uh, number of ways to get prefix target um, 0 to i. And then what would the transition be? So when I add a new... Hmm, I don't think I can do it like that. Let's say, for example, I have the entire DP array is 0, 0, 0. Let's get rid of this. I go through the first column of the matrix. Um, how do I deal with duplicates? This is a duplicate. If I see an A, I would have to go through all possible A's within the target string and see what the previous value is. Uh, so I see the B here. When I see an A, I go through all possible values of A in the target string and add what the number before that was. So for this A, I try to add some the number before that, but there is none, so I just add one, so that's a base case. That's why this is two. And then I see an A here. I'm trying to add a one from the previous one. Hmm. No, that doesn't work. I have to keep two copies because this B came from the same row. This is the previous, this is from the previous column. And then I make a new copy. When I see a B, I want to add to the new copy, the previous value that came from B. So that will be an A here and that'll be one. And then when I see an A here, I want to add to this a the previous value, which is this one, and that's zero. So that remains zero. And this one, I want to add the previous value, but this is the first letter, so which means I actually just want to add one. All right. So that's so this is new updated uh, DP array. I replace the old one with the updated, and then I create a new copy. I made a new copy, so now I can go on to the next column. Next column is CBC. Uh, the only relevant values here are, is actually just the B. So I go through all possible Bs in my target string, this B, and I add on the previous value. So one plus a two will be a three. So that's saying that there are three ways to get the string AB from the first three columns of this matrix. And is that true? Well, you have A, B, that's one way. You have A, B, that's two ways. You have A, B, that's three ways. So now let's replace the old DP array with the new and make a copy of the new one, like so. Then we can move on to the last column. You have A, B, A. So the, I see an A. Um, for the first one here, it's the first letter. So all I have to do is just increment that to B3. For this A, I want to add the previous one, which is three. I see a B. This B, I can add uh, two to this B. So this is five. And for this A, now, for, now I see an A again, so then for the first A, I want to increment that to be 4. And for the other A, I can add the previous ones, which is going to be 6. So 4, 5, 6, and there's 6 ways to do that. That's correct. Let's try with a different example. This one seems good. So apparently there's 16 ways to get ABBA, and uh, we'll just try to do it a little quicker this time. So then my DP array is going to be 0, 0, 0. Initially, I have two copies. 
So it should just be a two for the first column, then replace the new old with the new. And then with an I see I have a B here, so this will be a two. And then I have an A, so this increments by one. I have a B here, so that means this is now a four. I see another A, so this is a four. That makes sense because four different ways to get an A B. So you have A B, that's one. You have A B, that's another one. A B, that's one. You have A B, that's another one. So it's four different ways. Okay. And um, place that. Copy. The third column, I have an A here. So I'm going to this by one. Um, F a B. So I make sure this is now an eight. And this is now a four. See so another B. So then I have to do that again. This is now a 12. And this is now an eight. And then I see an A, so this increments by one, and this A increments by zero. And then I update the old one and make a copy. I'm up to the last column now. So I have a B, this B here. I want to add six to this B. So we have 12 plus six, um, which is 18. So that's F plus three, so I have I, I guess. So let's make this I. <laughs> and for this one, I add um, C to eight. Okay, that's getting out of hand, so. So this one would be, um, 18, which is, and this one would be 8 plus C, which is uh, 12 plus 8, so I get 20. I see an A here, so then this would be 0 plus 8, so that's going to be 8, and, and another A, so this is going to be 16. And then I'm going to see another B, so I add to these ones, 18 plus 6, which is 24. And then I have 20 plus C, uh, which is going to be 32. But that's 16 and that's the answer, so that kind of works out. The only thing left to do is um, uh, optimize it just a little bit. So one thing you kind of notice is that um, there's only lowercase English letters. So actually, I could keep track how many A's there are, how many B's there are. So what we can do is actually um, break this down a little bit so that we have um, an alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, dot, dot, dot. How many A's do we have in the first column? There are two. How many B's? There are two, and the rest is zero, and that's the first iteration. Okay, and then for the second column, I do the same, and I see there's two A's and two B's. Okay, good. And for the third column, I see there's two A's, two B's, so it'll be the same like this. And for the fourth column, there's two A's, two B's. So it looks like this as well. So what I have is a vector of arrays of size 26, and each one denotes the frequency of a letter. So they have something like this. And then for the target array, what I could have is 26 vectors, A, B, C, D, E, where each letter here denotes a vector. And these vectors would be, for A, how, what positions are there are in the target string. So this will be zero and one. And and three, I think zero, one, two, three. For the B here, what positions there are? Um, well, I have uh, one and two. So each one is a vector, and so this vector, this column is a vector. And I think I have to return the answer uh, modulo something, ten to the power of nine plus seven. And I think I can take the modulus um, as I go along. So let's first um, make this array. So let's. Um, do for int i is equal to zero. I less than words dot size plus plus i. For int j is equal to zero. J less than words i dot size plus plus j. And create a vector called frequency, a vector of vectors of int called frequency and how many vectors are there? There's going to be words dot size vectors. Each one is a vector of 26 characters. Initialize zero frequency. So what can we actually do is um, actually swap these nested arrays so that we have a j, j going from word zero dot size because all the words are the same length, then do this in the inner array. So this is essentially now going through each of the columns one by one. So if I do words at i, j, I'm going through the columns, then I could say the frequency at this word of um, this column, and this column is given by j, 
word frequency of words i j minus a so since it's in, in ascii i just turn it into a range from 0 to 25 and just do plus plus on this to increase the frequency now that i have that i can make a vector of vectors called position um how many vectors should there be 26 should be 26 vectors um empty filled with empty um vectors I just want to go through the target word and I want to do position um, at this word. So target I uh, minus A is a dot push back this position I. So I'm recording the positions of the letters found within the target. And then let's create our DP array called current and previous, I guess. Vector of int. So we have a previous of target.size and we'll initialize to zero and also have a current the same way and then I go through each of the columns one by one so right now I'm going through the first column which means I go through all letters of the first array within frequencies wait this is wrong this frequency is the number of columns so this should be target size. This can this can also be target size. It's the same thing actually. Go through all the letters. Go through each of the letters, and for each of the letters, go through each of the positions within the target string, which is given by position of L for int p in position of L. If p is equal to zero, um, just do the current at i at p plus plus uh, no not plus 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 equals to the frequency which is given by uh, frequency of this columns this letter else the current at the position plus equals to current p minus one at the previous position times the frequency at i l cool cool so once I've filled out the current, um, it should be previous actually, I want to make the previous equal to current, and then at the end return the current at the last value, which is um, target.size minus one. Uh, um, I kind of went out drinking yesterday, so my brain is not working at all. I thought. Yeah, this confused me a little bit. So you have the same length of words in target, but the words within words may not have the same length as target. There may be a lot more columns than I realize. All strings in words have the same length. So this actually should be uh, words zero dot size. It should be words zero dot size. Not target size. It should be um, words zero dot size. Okay, so that's working. Um, let's try this. A, B, A, B, A. So this one's the big one. Hopefully I get 16. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let's do the modulus thing. So it's working. So I actually want to type def long, long as an LL. Um, and then for the DP values, they could get pretty large. So Say this is ll. Actually, I could just do here. Current p is equal to is modulus equals to mod. And that here I could say what mod is. So it's const static int mod is equal to one e nine plus seven. I should have um, actually gone through and, and checked what the time complexity of this is. I think it's good enough because words zero dot size is up to a thousand, so you have a thousand times 26 times a thousand potentially, but uh, most likely less. So that's um, n squared times 26. Cool, cool, cool. Let's uh, give that a go. Awesome, awesome, that's fantastic. Another hard question on the first go, yes. Yes, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. But this one took about an hour and 20 minutes. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to keep eating the code.